Hello and welcome. The following is an excerpt from a sync manufacturing software demonstration presented by John Maher, Vice President of Product Strategy for Synchrono. Here John is covering Conload, the company's patented manufacturing scheduling algorithm that comes with sync manufacturing software. Cool oh, and then a manufacturing environment is through a patented scheduling algorithm that we call Conload. And to talk about Conload and really its impact in a manufacturing environment, one of the things that we need to look at and understand is how pull uh, is fundamentally different from push, and one of the main reasons why it works as far as getting velocity through the system and making the system more predictable. In a push environment, or in most manufacturing environments, about 85 to 90% of the cycle time, the time from release into production until it's done, about 85 to 90 percent of that time is queue time, time where a part is sitting waiting for its turn on the machine to get run. So knowing this, in an environment that's push, where the moment we get orders, we're releasing them into the system, if demand is greater than what the system can handle, then we're going to release more into the system the queues are going to grow, which means the cycle times are going to grow. If demand is less than what the system can handle, our queues are going to shrink and our cycle times are going to shrink. And this leads us to really an accordion type effect on our cycle time, which is why in most manufacturing organizations, if you go to planning and scheduling and say, hey, this order just got released, when's it going to get out of the system? It's very difficult for them to come to that decision, and it's a guess at best. What Conload does is, one, it uses the very real concept of constraints or pacemakers within the organization. And you can have one or many of these set up within the organization. And really, what Conload is doing is it's using these as a proxy to understand what the pace or capability of the organization is. And if we, if we look at it, one of the things that we want to do with pacemakers or constraints is make sure that they always have enough work to do. So, what we're really going to define is, for each pacemaker and constraint, what's the amount of work in process inventory that we have to have in the system to make sure that that resource is always running, but no more than that. And to do that in sync manufacturing with the concept of conload, we define WIP based on the standard unit measure across all parts in manufacturing organization, and that is how many hours it, it takes. So. For every customer order that we're looking to release into the process, we're really looking at how many hours it takes on each of our constraint resources. And what we do is we set up the total number of hours that we have to have released into the system to make sure that our constraint is always running, but no more than that. And that doesn't mean that all this work is sitting at the constraint. It means it's somewhere between the release point and where the constraint is. So the system is going to go ahead and it's going to release. Uh, work into the system, so we're at five hours in the system. We jump up to 12 hours. We're still not over the, the max load or the con load of 20 hours in this example. So we're going to go ahead and keep releasing. We're going to release another order in. We're up to 19 hours. And then when it releases the next order in, we're going to be up to 25 release load hours. We're over 20, so it's going to say hold up. And the software is going to start choking the release of work into the system now. And it's not going to allow work, more work into the system until, as it's monitoring the auto sander, until the auto sander completes out that five hours worth of work. And we're back down to our 20 hours. And then it's going to release the next job and then choke the release. So in this way, uh, Conload is basically choking the release of work into the system to be what the system can handle based on constraints within the system. And some of the cool things about this is that uh, since we do have a real-time planning, scheduling, and execution system, the system is going to be looking at the constraints and seeing how fast they're running. And if they're running faster than we expected, it's going to release stuff in faster. If they're running slower than we expected, it's going to slow down the release, but always keeping us at that optimal level of work and process in the system. And if you think about this, what we end up doing is, one, we end up having only in the system what we need in the system to maximize throughput through the system. In addition, we cut down on some of the bad things that occur when we have too much work in process in the system. People working on the wrong things, people cherry picking, 
people having to handle materials more than what's necessary. All of those things get eliminated. In addition to that, since we keep a nice consistent level of work in process, it allows us to keep a nice consistent level of queues within the system. And by doing that, we end up having a consistent level of queues, which are the largest determinant in cycle time, which means that we can get to a point of having a consistent cycle time, and that allows us to become predictable as an organization. The last thing that I would say about this is that by only having in the system what the system needs to be its most effective as far as throughput, we really ramp up the flow through the system and dramatically decrease cycle time and lead time because the only things that are in the system are things that need to be in the system. And when something gets released into the system, it has a clear path to run through the system as quickly as possible. So moving on, I just want to point out again that you know you can have one or you can have many constraints established within the system. If we do have multiple constraints established within the system, then the system's got to look whenever it's looking to release an order. It's going to look at all the constraints that that order runs through. And based on the most loaded of those, it's going to determine when it can get released into the system. So if I bounce into our software, Sync Manufacturing, at this point, Sync Manufacturing is a, is a bolt-on solution, basically a bolt-on to an ERP system. We do a real-time integration from the ERP system into Sync Manufacturing. We're pulling information that you would normally expect for planning, scheduling, and execution. So we're pulling in customer orders, purchase orders, item masters, bills of materials, routings, current inventory position, all of those things in real time in the sync manufacturing. To give you a view of the model that we're working with today, I'm going to bounce into what's called our demand or maintenance screen. And our demand or maintenance screen is a listing of all open customer sales order lines. And if I right click off of one of these to give you an idea of the type of model that we're looking at, I'm going to go into what's called our production plan. And our production plan is a graphical view of the bill material and routing. So the rectangles are the routing steps or operations that need to be performed. The ovals are materials that are required for it. So this is our graphical view of build materials and routing. So you can see that we're dealing with a multi-level bill. As I said, if it's being built discreetly, things will get chained together into one long value stream. And I can drill back to multi-levels within the build material all the way back to to where it starts and the different legs. As things get completed, they turn white. As materials become available, they turn white. And we use red, yellow, green to kind of alert you to the status of the order. Red means expedite, so this order, this particular part on the order, is running behind. And since this is yellow, which is the area that we want resources working on stuff, I can tell that this order really should be here. And this screen has many uses within the software. It gets used by many different people. One is customer service or sales looking to check on the status of an order. It can be production planning, seeing where an order's at. It can be the shop floor if they're working on a certain operation and they want to know how far away this expedite order is to come through the system. Moving along from there, I'm going to go into our master schedule, which is really where download takes place. And our master schedule, I can filter it by a particular constraint resource. And this shows me all orders that have to run through that constraining resource, but that have not been released to the manufacturing floor yet. So this is going to give me a prioritized list of orders that need to get released to manufacturing that run through this constraint. They're going to be prioritized based on what we call latest release date, which is the latest they could get released into the system based on their cycle time and still get through on time. This screen is primarily used by planners and schedulers, and we really want planners and schedulers to kind of move away from managing all orders in the system to managing just those with exceptions. So speaking about com load, the way it works is that this particular order is going to get released on the 27th at 9.16 p.m. At that point, we're going to be at 15 release load hours, our max or con load hours is set to 15 hours. And this order itself takes 12.31 hours. 
at the 193 paint resource. The way it works is that within sync manufacturing, since we're releasing this order for 12.31 hours, we're going to be 12.31 hours above our max load of 15. So the next order is going to need to wait until we get back down to that 15 hours. So it's going to offset this release date by 12.31 hours. And it's going to do the same with the next order. And this is basically how it's gating work into the system. The system also is going to give us red, yellow, green highlights here. And for the planner, what this means is that if it's red, it's going to get released late into the system and is expected to be late to the customer. If it's in the yellow, it's going to get released late, but we still expect it to be on time because we do have a certain amount of buffer built in. If it's in the green zone, it means that everything is okay. It's expected to be released on time and completed on time. And what we're telling the planner and scheduler here is that if we are in the, if we do have things that are in the red zone, those are things that they need to address before they become a problem and get released to the shop floor. And there's really two reasons why something would show up in the red zone. One is based on capacity, and the other is based on materials. And within the master schedule, you can quickly see it'll highlight which constraint resources constraining it or which ones have a material constraint issue, and we can quickly drill through and figure out what the issue is and playing and scheduling needs to work on just the exceptions to resolve them before these get out to the manufacturing floor. So this gets extended to sales where if you're in an environment where there's people taking in orders and, and quoting them to their customers about when they can be delivered, they can put in what items they're looking for, the quantities, and what date the customer is requesting. And Sync Manufacturing will do a real-time check against capacity and materials and come back with when they can be delivered, give a realistic sale date to uh, sales. If it can't be delivered, it'll tell you which items or which constraining resources are blocking it from happening so that planning and scheduling and, bot and purchasing can get involved to try and resolve those issues. This is typically integrated tightly with the ERP system so that on the ERP system, they can just be doing order entry, click a button, have it do a real-time call to sync manufacturing to say when it can be delivered, get it validated against capacity and materials and sent back to the ERP system to tell them when it can be delivered. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of ConLab, Synchronous Patented Manufacturing Scheduling Algorithm. You can learn more about ConLab Sync Manufacturing Software, and more at Synchrono.com. There you'll find white papers, case studies, positioning papers, and more, as well as the opportunity to register for a private demo of Sync Manufacturing Software. Thanks for joining us.